What a capacitor does is it's an energy storage device. All right, so there was a good question on one of my videos on the single phase versus three phase video by Austin Nix that brought up, uh, if you have a capacitor on a motor, would it be constantly delaying when it hits the point of no power? So really what he's talking about is like, motors sometimes they can't spin, like there's a, they, they have to have a capacitor that kind of delays and adds some capacitive reactance which shifts the voltage and the amperage, instead of being in the same phase, it kind of shifts them. And that's a, uh, able to kick that motor over, or basically bump the magnet enough. And since there's a delay, it's gonna keep spinning and get the motor kicked off. So let's get into a little bit like what capacitors do in a motor. What a capacitor does is it's an energy storage device. So capacitors will store electricity and charge up and then they discharge. So kind of like a battery, right? You can charge a battery up really over a long period of time and then you can slowly discharge that battery over a long period of time. Capacitors are a lot quicker, so you can quickly charge and quickly discharge. So in DC circuits, typically you're trying to charge something to store up energy and then there's some kind of function that you need to use and boom, when you hit the, a button, it dumps all of that. So a lot of the older cameras with flashes used capacitors. So it would build up this charge, you'd hear like, like it's building up and then you hit a button and it dumps all of that and then makes a flash go off. With AC, it's a little bit different. There's kind of a smoothing effect that happens because alternating current changes back and forth 60 times a second. So there is no charging through a capacitor and then discharging at some point when you want to use it. It's just charging, discharging every time the cycles change. So what that allows us to do is there are some things that just can't start or they would run really rough or like lights that might flicker. Adding a capacitor in an AC circuit can delay things enough so it actually smooths out the waveforms and allows something to run a lot more efficiently. Uh, big utility companies on their power lines use capacitors. Every once in a while when you're driving down the road, you might see these three like big tank things that are like built up on a wooden rack on the side of the road. And you'll see the power lines come down to them. It's reactive power. So I'm not gonna get into like crazy amounts of what reactive power is and inductive reactance and capacitive reactants and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, I do want to sit and draw on the board a little bit and show you what's going on with capacitive reactants um, and then talk a little bit more about like specifically a start capacitor versus a run capacitor versus like a dual motor run capacitor versus like a dual run start capacitor because there's a lot of different kinds and they have very specific reasons that we use them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this whole like phase shift thing, in phase, out of phase. So typically in an AC system, so we've got like a 240 volt single phase electrical system. That means we've got two hots, a neutral and a ground typically. Normally when we run any kind of typical load that's not an inductive or capacitive load, which honestly there's inductors and capacitors in damn near anything and everything now. But when you apply a certain voltage, what you expect in a normal electrical system is when you apply that pressure, the voltage, you should push the thing that you're applying the voltage to. The current should move. So they are called in phase with each other when that happens, when your voltage and your current are applied and something happens together. Now, what would happen if you started pushing, applying voltage or applying pressure and the load didn't move, but the second you stopped, it moved. Be kind of weird, right? So let's get into that. This is inductive reactance. I just ran out of room. Forgive me for the if and the ants, but it's usually denoted by XL. Um, it's a type of impedance. So in other videos I've done, we talk about the difference between resistance and reactance. This is not resistance, this is a reactance. This is something that happens in AC circuits, specifically with inductors and capacitors. So with inductive reactants, there's this acronym that we use for both types of reactances. We say Eli the Iceman. Eli is what we're talking about with inductance. You notice there's an L in the middle. L is the symbol for inductance. If you're ever doing math and trying to figure out inductance, you're using L. So that's what L is for. This means that the voltage leads 
L doesn't stand for leads. It just means voltage is on the front. It's leading the, the, the abbreviation. And current is over here at the end. So voltage is leading, current is lagging in an inductive circuit. Now, if we look at capacitive, it's different. It's not voltage in front anymore. It's current in front. So this is the Iceman portion, the Val Kilmer. <laughs> so the current leads in a capacitive circuit and the voltage lags. So let's look at the difference in how these things actually shift. So right, we had in phase. When we push with voltage, push pressure, our current is in phase. At the same point when there's no voltage, there's no current, no push, nothing moves, right? That's how typical things work. When we have inductive reactants, we have ELI. So we have voltage that leads the current. So that means when we apply a voltage, nothing's gonna happen with the current right away. When we take that voltage away, the current's gonna start to move. It creates a lag in the current but the voltage is not gonna be affected. In an inductor, voltage is never affected. Voltage just keeps pulsing back and forth and, and providing. It's the current that can't really get through as well that's being affected by this reactance. And the reason being is when you look at an inductor, what's happening is this is a de-energized state, right? We apply a voltage to it. Once current starts to move through it, it can't just move straight through. It's got this coil. And when you have a coil like that, there's an, uh, every time you push current through a conductor, there's an uh, electromagnetic field that pulses. Well, it pulses really fast, so it's, it's pretty much constant for, you know, like our speed, 60 times a second's pretty damn fast. So, it's creating this field around it where all these magnetic lines of force are around the conductor. But look what happens on the inside. It is tight and just filled with magnetic resistance, essentially. So imagine trying to move through a conductor and you've got this magnet like pushing back on you because it's just so tight and bound up with magnetic energy on the inside of that. So it's actually slowing the current. Meanwhile, the voltage is still just pumping. It's just, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's why the current actually lags the voltage in an inductive circuit. So let's go back. That was that, right? So we've got a normal circuit and then boom, all of a sudden the current has a lag to it. All right, so capacitive reactance is when you have a capacitor in a circuit. And so we use XC for capacitance. Again, we're gonna have our current leading this time and the voltage is gonna be lagging. And the reason that is, is because in a capacitor, you actually have to charge. You're creating an electric field, not a magnetic field. Electric field's a very different thing. An electric field is a field of electrical energy that is a difference of potential. So you've got you know positive on one side, negative on the other side. If there's no difference, positive or negative, you don't have an electrical field. But once you bring a positive and a negative, or you know, an up and a down or whatever, could you create a difference of potential. In between that difference of potential is what we call an electric field. Um, same thing on a magnet, right? Like if you have a north and a south, there's all of a sudden a magnetic field. So we're creating a electric field, but in order to create that electric field, current can flow just fine through a capacitor. It's the voltage that takes a while, right? It, it has to charge up from nothing to charging up a voltage so then it can release that voltage. So this is the, the schematic, uh, essentially what's going on in the capacitors. You've got two different plates inside of there. Typically when the ca capacitor is discharged, all of these positive and negative charges are just floating in there. They're like, you know, just mixed, normal. They're not lined up in any meaningful way. But once we send current through it, current leads, then the voltage across these plates has to develop. All these charges start splitting and separating. And once they've fully separated, now we have a voltage. But now they're so far apart, no current can get through that. So that's why we have this difference, right? We have current going right through, charging the thing to push all of those charges apart to create a voltage. And it just takes a while, there's a delay in that voltage. So you can see that the current goes through. When the voltage is developed across those plates, there's no current that flows. And so as that thing dumps, you have current that starts pushing. So it's the same kind of thing, right? They're just inverse of each other. So when you've got 
too much inductance. Some, sometimes like big places like Home Depot's, Walmart's, they've got just tons of inductive loads and lighting loads and things that are just inductive in nature. There's so much machinery that their entire power that's being provided to their building is crazy inefficient. It's like the power that's provided is only doing half the work because it's so damn out of phase. It's so inefficient. So every time the voltage is applied to anything, there's just like this crazy lag. So they're paying for a certain amount of use, but they're using twice as much and only doing half as much work because of how damn inefficient it is. So that's what power factor correction is all about. So in an inductive environment like that, they bring these massive banks full of capacitors and they hook them up and that capacitance inside of that building will actually bring those waveforms a lot closer together probably not you know close enough because there's you're not gonna have enough capacitors to really draw that back to like unity power factor um, but it gets it a lot closer so then they can do more pay less they have more efficient system and they're not overpaying for you know crazy energy bill now in the case of our air conditioner that we were talking about. Imagine right now, I'm gonna use a like vertical line so that you imagine like north and south of a magnet. Imagine that you've got like uh, north and south here. When we send current through near the north or near the south end of a magnet, it's gonna influence it because electrical properties are similar to magnetism. Electricity actually creates magnetism or has magnetic properties. So it'll influence a magnet. So if you, have a, if you have your north and your south like this next to these poles, these are just stators inside of a motor. This is the rotor, that's the rotating part. Once you send current through these, it's gonna kick this. But what happens when it gets here? It's not gonna move. It can't move. There's nothing over here and over here that's influencing it. So either we would have to like create two more poles and try to make something that way and use twice as much material, twice as much wire, or we can add a capacitor because the capacitor is going to lead with current and it's gonna lag with voltage. So it's going to allow for a voltage that's applied to kick through. The current is gonna pass through. It's gonna lag the voltage for a slight second. And then once that current dumps essentially, it's gonna bump it the rest of the way. So now we're using the main power, the main push and pull on this cycle. And then in between that, every not, you know, 90 degrees different, we're going to be using the, the, the stored dump from the capacitor. So it's just like applied voltage, boom, reactive voltage, boom, applied voltage, boom, reactive voltage, boom. And that's how we get the delay, this like delayed dump. It's like a push, push. Um, instead of just a push, push, you know, it, it won't start that way. So we're giving it like a push, 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 push. That is how we, a capacitor starts a motor. Then the run capacitor, once the start capacitor does this whole thing, the start capacitor is gonna kick out and then you have a run capacitor that's wired. Very similarly, because of all of this induction, it's going to be constantly running the whole time with inductive reactants. So with inductive reactant, reactants, that means you have a voltage that leads your, uh, your current. And so to get those things back in phase for this motor to run super efficient, actually do the work for the power we're sending it rather than sending it a bunch of power and it's not really able to do the work very well, but we're still using the same amount of power, um, then we can add a second capacitor, a run capacitor, and that's going to help the actual, the, the increase in inductance as this thing works uh, is gonna help with the capacitance to bring the power factor back to unity and again, be efficient. So let's look at a situation like an air conditioning compressor. ACs outside, right? They got a fan in them, they got a little compressor. Um, typically you're gonna see a capacitor inside of them. You will most of the time see a start capacitor and a run capacitor. Usually the start capacitor has a higher microfarad rating and microfarads are just what capacitors are rated in. So it might have like a, a 45 or 50 microfarads. And then the, start, the run capacitor is gonna have something like a five or a seven or like a nine microfarad. You need more of a buildup and release to 
kickstart that motor essentially. And again, it's not DC, so it's not just building up and then releasing. What it's doing is delaying, it's shifting the voltage and the amperage enough so that once the voltage is applied, then there's a lag when the amperage is experienced. So you're, you're basically applying um, voltage and amperage differently rather than a, both of them. And then when there's no voltage, that magnet and stop uh, that magnet inside stops spinning and gets locked up that's what happens a lot of single phase motors you try to start them when the magnet inside of that motor the the actual rotor is in whatever position it's in and you apply a voltage it'll spin but once that voltage is gone it doesn't it, there's no other way for it to spin so it's it's usually going to be locked in two different positions so if you kick it with voltage it's going to go here and then when you kick it with voltage, it's stuck in the middle. There's nowhere for it to spin. So if you add a capacitor that will allow you, when you kick it with voltage, for it to spin, but it's charging still, so it has a point of release, so then it kicks it even more once that capacitor discharges, and then it brings it back into cycle and it allows it to start spinning. Um, so the start capacitor is usually higher mark microfarads just giving you a bump usually disconnects from the circuit and then once the motor starts to run and get up to its rated speed a run capacitor is going to take over all that load and it's lower microfarad um, because it doesn't need to like have a strong pulse to it it doesn't need to start anything it really just needs to kind of smooth everything out and so it just keeps the motor running and keeps it running efficiently it keeps reactants in the circuit rather than there being no reactants in the circuit and it's just this highly inductive motor they add a little bit of capacitance to it because anytime that you have too much inductance or too much capacitance your voltage and your uh, current waveforms when they should be in phase like that's efficiency right when you apply a voltage current pushes what's really inefficient is when you apply a voltage and nothing happens and then you stop applying the voltage and the current pushes and then you start again and the current stops. So they're completely out of phase with each other. It's really inefficient. And this is something we call power factor. So power factor um, essentially is just how, how efficient is your motor. There's also efficiency with motors, but you can think of power factor as the relationship to uh, the phases being in together with voltage and current. So if your voltage and current are very, very, very 100% in phase, then you're, you have a power factor of one. It's unity, it's perfect. But anything that deviates from that, if you start getting an induction motor without having a capacitor, there's too much induction, it actually starts pulling the current and the voltage away. It starts creating this kind of like weird push-pull thing where it's losing efficiency. That is what we call inductive reactance. It's, some, it's a reaction that happens from having a bunch of inductance in something. Capacitive reactance, very similar thing. It's just the opposite. Inductance and reactance are complete opposites of each other. They do the same thing, but they're opposing. So capacitance, um, you know, same thing. If there's too much capacitance in a circuit, you need to put an inductor in it because the capacitance will bring that phase shift so far out that it's really inefficient. But once you add an inductor back into the circuit, it brings everything back. So a lot of times run capacitors are used in applications like motors, uh, HID lighting, things like that, to because of the induction, to actually bring it back into sync so that you have good power factors, so you have efficiency and everything's running like it's supposed to be. Now, that covers the start capacitor, that covers the run capacitor. There's two other kinds of capacitors. You could come across something called a dual start run capacitor, and a dual start run means that it's a start and a run together into one capacitor. And typically there's three leads on them. There's one common terminal and that's your incoming power. And then you've got two other leads. Uh, one of them goes to the, the, the wire inside of the motor that is for run. And the other one is where it goes for start, but it's just combining both functions into one capacitor. Then the last capacitor we're gonna talk about is the dual motor run capacitor. So this is when you have two motors and you have a run capacitor. So there's one run capacitor that's controlling or that's providing capacitive reactance for both of the motors. So you actually have one capacitor uh, that is providing reactance for the fan 
and for the, com the, the hermetically sealed compressor at the same time. So my friend, to answer your question, hopefully that answered your question. Um, basically though, the, the reason that capacitors are in there is so that that doesn't happen. What you're saying is like, when there's no voltage or when you know voltage and current are in phase with each other and then there's all of a sudden this point of no voltage which happens 60 times a second every time that ac waveform switches directions there's no power there's no voltage there's no current the reason that we use capacitors is to shift it so there's always some kind of applied voltage and reacting current that's happening um, and it just keeps motion going. It keeps the rotation happening. Now, if you wanna know more about all this kind of trickery, trickery wizardry, uh, you should go to Electrician U, check out our courses. We've got a whole bunch of courses. We do continuing education, so we're getting approved in like tons of states. We don't have all the states yet. Actually, there's only like half the US that's even required to do continuing education. Did you know that? Anyways, we're getting a bunch of approvals. We've got approvals um, in like Texas and uh, Idaho and Montana and like all kinds of states. So go check out our continuing education. Go to electricianu.com, sign up for some courses, some classes, some continuing education. We've got code practice. I got like a code cannon thing that just shoots you like 300 questions and you can just study and look through your code book. Um, but yeah, check out electricianu. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.